I'm Robbie Miller and this is a really exciting video today because we're going to be getting in depth with the brand new plugin from Celestian, Speaker Mix Pro. Now this is going to go along with another video that I've made so keep an eye out for it because in the other video I'm going to be demoing a track which compares the sounds between the regular Celestian impulse responses and the brand new DSRs from Celestian. And you might be wondering, well, what are DSRs? Well, DSR stands for Dynamic Speaker Response. And to learn more about it, I caught up with Joe Elsom, Development Engineer over at Celestian. So make sure you've got a cup of tea or a cup of coffee and you're ready to learn. I learned so much in this conversation. So a big thank you to Joe and Celestian for speaking with me and telling me more about Speaker Mix Pro and giving us a little bit of a walkthrough of the plugin. So without further ado, enjoy this conversation and do keep an eye out for another video that I've done that showcases some of the sounds from the Speaker Mix Pro plugin. Well, we are here with Joe Elson from Celestian. Joe. Thanks for being on this, uh, on this video with me today. How are you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you. How are you? Yeah, really, really good. And very, ex <laughs> very excited, so excited I can't speak about Speaker Mix Pro um, because you're one of the many moving parts that have brought all this together. And it's, it's Celestian's first plugin, which mm -hmm. is why it's so exciting. And um, I've been lucky enough to, to try it for a couple of weeks now. And um, yeah, just really excited to talk about it and excited to hear about you know, the things you can tell us about what, you know, these new DSRs are and, mm -hmm. you know, take us around, um, you know, the plug in a little bit and tell us what, you know, folks can expect when using it. So I guess the first question is, um, impulse responses have been around for a while. We know Celestian have done a, an amazing job. I'm a huge fan of Celestian impulse responses. Um, but tell us how the DSRs differ into what we know already. Yeah, so it's probably best to start with uh, contextualizing impulse responses. Right. Uh, so they've exist existed in the uh, in the, the guitar guitar world for a number of years now. Celestine have been uh, measuring and selling impulse responses since 2017, um, and essentially it is the response of a system to an impulse, uh, in the most generalized uh, description. Um, so in the in the case of guitar speakers or, or guitar cabinets, amplifiers, and so on. It's, uh, and in the case of Celestian, it's the response of the cabinet loaded with Celestian speakers with a microphone. In our case, it's a SM57, a Royal 121, and a uh, MD421, um, yeah. and then TLM 107s for the room. Um, and that, that gives a description of the response of that system, that three layer system of cabinet, speaker, microphone, um, that when you put it into a plugin, into a convolution plugin, for example, uh, and you play through it, you get the tone of the system. Um, so it's essentially a, a little snapshot of mm -hmm. that tone. Mm -hmm. um, so if you, you know, swap out the speakers for different cabinets, you can, you, you have essentially have access to possibly infinite combinations of speakers and cabinets. If that many speakers and cabinets existed, right. Uh, as many as you want. So it's, you know, it's like having uh, access to, thousands of different cabinets in a, in a live room yes. and so on in, on a, on a laptop yeah. in a coffee shop. <laughs> Very convenient. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the, the, the impulse responses are static. Um, and that's, it's, uh, essentially means that when you play the strings harder, you hit it harder, the, you drive the amp harder, mm -hmm. the response doesn't ever change. You still get the tone of a well-driven speaker, Mm -hmm. but it is entirely static in response to your playing at, at that moment in time. Mm -hmm. um, which means that when, when you hit this, the string harder with a real guitar speaker, you would drive more current into the speaker. It would break up more. You get a little bit more motion of the, of the cone, the surface area of the cone, and it changes the tone. You get different harmonics generated, a different balance of the harmonics generated. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, it's, it's not just a, a tonal difference, but also a field difference. It's the, the system talking back to you that, really immerses you in the um in the tone itself yeah um the static response the impulse responses while they are, are imminently practical and very very useful especially for live purposes when you're on stage you don't need any cabinets or microphones um they only ever give you that that static response regardless of how hard you drive it um with speaker mix pro celestine have implemented a, a next generation of, of response called dynamic speaker response uh, and these dynamic res speaker responses or DSRs are 
essentially that it's very self self-explanatory they are the dynamic response of that system so in the same case as the celestial impulse responses we have cabinet speakers and microphone and that chain in the dynamic speaker responses is described by a component level model that reacts to your playing and how hard you drive the speaker uh, effectively related to to the input power the wattage that you're driving into the into the loudspeaker um, and then the the nuance of how you're playing which re-immerses the the performer or the player mm -hmm. uh, from digital tone into it, that that real feel of the of the speaker communicating back to you because you get a different balance of the harmonics generated when you hit the strings harder mm -hmm. uh, depending on where you're playing on the neck mm -hmm. uh, how much power you're driving into it with the with speaker mix pro pro the the plugin um, so it's it's not just a step for tonal improvement um, because impulse responses are very very close to to real tone yeah um, it's it's the the feel and the immersion um, which I think is a very very important thing to connect the the player the performer to the to the signal chain yeah and that is the missing link it really really is and you know i can see that's that is the the sort of you know one of the the many big goals of this plugin and what you've developed is the feel and there is unfortunately as 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 great as um you know youtube is we are never going to be able to deliver the feel of this plugin you yeah. know in this video so it is one of those things you just need to try and once you try here's the, here's the funny thing about this it's hard to not hear these sounds and this feel again. It's kind of hard to go back to impulse, you know, the, the, the regular impulse responses in a way, in a way that's obviously mm. not taken away from their amazing tonal factors, but there is a real feel, you know, you really, you know, dig in the guitar pick into the strings. It really feels like you're playing with a, um, a speaker, you know, mm. a real speaker. Well, that's exactly, that's exactly the idea behind it. Yeah. Um, okay. So look, I've got the plugin open up here. I thought maybe, you know, you might be able to talk us through a little bit and, um, yeah. you know, some of the, the wonderful things going on here. Um, so we can just have a sort of a better understanding for it, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. We're greeted with a, a wonderful Celestian uh, G12 greenback right now. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, you know, one of the coolest factors is, um, you know, as before, Again, on, on impulse responses, we get these great, um, you know, balanced, dark, fat, thin sounds that come uh, with, our, with the Celestian IRs, uh, which sound great. This is cool, though, because I can move uh, whereabouts I want the, the microphone to be on the speaker and sort of get a real, you know, really pinpoint um, the sound that I'm after and, and why it sounds that way. Um, that's a pretty pretty cool feature yeah so the um a part of the dsr algorithm is is that it's a component level model that is easily morphed and moved around its current state so we we begin with the the tried and tested celestial mic, mic positions um uh, of which we have from left to right in the in the interface uh, thin bright balanced fat dark and dark too which you can snap to with the scroll wheel mm -hmm. um the DSR, the, the, the dynamic model behind the DSR um, can find positions between those mic positions. So it understands the, 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 the dynamic response at each of those positions. Uh, and in real time, as you move the slider, it dynamically morphs itself into new positions. So there's no interpolation of responses in between those positions, right. uh, which is the case if you were to uh, interpolate, uh, effectively interpolate between different impulse responses to find new positions in between. Right. Um, so it's essentially giving you tried and tested tone that we know sounds good mm -hmm. um, after hours in the studio of, of finding these positions yeah. um, and elaborating with the ability to morph between those positions, but yeah. without the, uh, the need for interpolation, which means that you should never be able to find uh, bad positions. It should only ever be interesting sounds. All um, killer, no filler. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> So it's pr probably a good place to start to contextualize the, the plugin because we've, we've sort of got two, two, two parts to this or even mm. possibly three parts. The plugin itself, uh, Speaker Mix Pro, um, which is a six channel processing suite mixing mm -hmm. console for and dedicated to speaker responses. Mm -hmm. So it is all about guitar speakers. Yes. Um, and cabinets and microphones and the combinations of the, of the three. Yeah. It has, it's uh, Speaker Mix Pro, it's got the, the, the next generation dynamic responses, 
the loudspeaker responses that we've developed to work with Speaker Mix Pro. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the foundation of what it's built on to mix between these done out responses and the feel of the different responses and so on. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously there's, since 2017, Celestine have been making impulse responses. So you can load your, it's also, it's also entirely compatible, backward compatible with impulse responses. You can load mm -hmm. all your favorite responses if you want to. If, right. uh, if you want to mix between them, mm -hmm. six channels, you can load either or on any way you want. Um, room processing, mid-side processing, EQs on every channel and the master. Yeah. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a sort of tone hub, if you will. <laughs> it really, really is. Um, let's just have a look at maybe how we might pick um, mm -hmm. a couple of mics. Could we try that? So here yeah. I am on, um, on channel one. Um, yep. or fader one. Um, if I head over to my cab, um, which is probably actually, this is probably set up with what I would use, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we'll, we'll go with, um, you know, we've got our speakers that we can choose from here at the top. Mm -hmm. um, I actually think I might keep it on the, on the G12 greenback for this demo. Um, yep. Obviously we can go between the speaker cabs here. I've got, you know, my one by 12 closed, two by 12 open, um, two by 12 closed is, is always a good choice for me. I, it's kind of a go-to and then, yeah, the, I mean, they're all here. The mics that you would want on your, on your cabinets are, are here. You've got your Shure SM57, 121, 421. Again, and I'm, I'm going to click the SM57 and the 57 is what, um, you know, uh, wraps this selection up, isn't it? When I choose the microphone, that's it saying, okay, this is your, uh, your package. Yeah. So you, you, you would usually select from top to bottom. So the, the yeah. guitar speaker at the top, and if you, uh, for, for a moment, hover over the guitar speaker, there's a little tool tip that t gives you an idea of the sort of tone to expect from it. Yes. Um, uh, which is useful if you're, you know, trying to explore new sounds, Definitely. Uh, click the speaker, uh, whichever prefer cab you like, mm -hmm. uh, the open back cabinets have the additional SM57 on the rear on the rear. Yep. Um, if, if you'd like to mix it in, it's a nice thing to mix in a, a, uh, a mic on the front, nice and snappy, and then fill in the low mids from the, from the rear mic. Uh, and then choosing the microphone completes that selection. Uh, mm -hmm. It doesn't close the interface because the user might be playing in real time or auditioning in real time right. and want to click between different mics. Uh, so you can click between the cabinet, different microphones, and hear the difference effectively yeah. as you're playing, or even go back to the speaker and choose a different microphone and cabinet combination um, and start again. Uh, so so awesome. it's, it's use, useful for, for auditioning like that. Once you're finished with the selection, uh, you just click the close in the top right hand corner. Yeah. And, uh, and you've, you've that, that speaker and cabinet combination is on channel one now. Perfect. So, um, I've got my, my fader up. Um, but, but I want to have another microphone on this. So, um, mm -hmm. I'm going to go to channel two, right? Fader two. Yep. Okay. So we'll go to fader two. I click the speaker again. And I know it's really boring, but I'm going to go with the same thing, um, but with a 121 instead. Sure. Can I do that? Yeah. So we'll go there. You can have any combination of Perfect. mics yeah. you want. <laughs> so it's not I've really got... a limit. It's to explore, find, find sounds. And, the... and, and that is the magic with this is, yeah, you, there's, there's almost an overwhelming amount of combinations. And, and actually, we were talking before in, a, in a, you know, the other week about some really weird and wonderful things you can do. You can get really creative with this plugin. Mm. It's really exciting. Definitely. So I've got my 57 on um, Fader 1, and I've got my, um, I got my 121 on Fader 2. Mm -hmm. um, I can pan these left and right. I could have the 57 coming out the left. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. P panning in any way you can, you can link the two if you want to have a, uh, a, a left, right pair. Okay. Um, uh, you can link the, the, the pairs of channels. We have one, two, three, four, and five, six. Yeah. That can be linked in pairs. So you could have, for example, a, uh, a, a your, your really dry mics, uh, close mics on the, on one and two, and then maybe three and four super wet, super wide, hard pan, left, right. Right. Um, that sort of thing. So just to, you know, give some, uh, choice if you want to make something a bit more diffuse and wider sound you know maybe right. for rhythm guitars or anything yeah um so yeah you've got pan left and right you've got the the room send yeah um, tell us about this which sends a uh, so it's probably best to start with uh, the the text in the top right hand corner of the of the mixer channel below the eq yes um clicking on that we have a a number of different room send options yeah uh, so you can either send to the bus which is the dark gray 
room channel on the on the right hand side. This one here, yeah. Um, or you have the SCR, the speaker excited room, which is the same live room uh, excited okay. by that that combination of speaker and cabinet. Okay. Um, so we've got you can either drive a choice of microphones, and on the room channel we have the uh, some vintage U67s, uh, Apollo, um, U Sonics mic. Uh, STC 4033, which are a pair of coals, and the TLM 107s, which are already Celestian, Celestian room mics. The speaker excited room is also uh, TLM 107s, um, and that's derived from the Celestian room responses in, in the impulse response um, pack. So there's, there's known room in there. So it's not just like, here's a new thing. You've also got uh, what there was before. Um, okay. Uh, but in this case, it, it allows you to, if you want to send multiple channels to the same room and mm -hmm. give the impression of multiple cabs and speakers being in the same space, you can do that. Or you can have each cabinet effectively exciting its own live room. And it's the same live room. So it's, it's if you have, for example, like we have on channel one and two, you can mm -hmm. have channel one and two having different speakers, different cabinets, exciting their, specifically their own room. And it's the equivalent of having two live rooms excited by each cabinet right um which is pretty cool so yeah. uh, so there's there's choice of rooms and if you wanted to you could load your your own uh user room response okay onto each channel so you could then mm -hmm. have a uh, you could have six different user room responses onto each channel if you wanted to okay. um and it, i mean it doesn't have to be room you could load any uh reverb response plate anything you want really mm -hmm. um there's no limit just a a, uh, an audio file, a web file, you can load onto those channels and have something different on each channels. Um, and if we and stop, sorry, carry on. So I was just going to say, and by the way, folks, the room, uh, the room sound is so convincing. It catches me off guard every single time I solo that room, the, the, the you know, the room bus. I, I genuinely feel like I have monitors on or there's a cabinet playing somewhere. It's, it's a very weird sensation, but a very real sensation. You know, it's, well, that, you guys have done the... a great job with it product of uh, many days in the studio um in <laughs> fact it's the it's the studio that builds the 3d render in the in the top part of the interface right um where we have that big log wall diffuser in the back yeah uh, lots of diffuse energy and that's on the, the long 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 axis of the room so it's a right. uh, it's a uh, it's quite an impressive uh space and and one of our locals to the to the suffolk area yeah um so I would, if I just, let, let's just say, okay, I want some, some room sound. I can just, mm -hmm. you know, turn, these are linked. So they're, they're turning up um, what's been sent to the room. And then I can use the room fader to blend that in and to, uh, yeah, just get a bit more of a fuller sound if I want. Yeah. Yeah. And on the, at the base of the room channel, you can click the text and there's the selection of microphones. There it is. Um, U67, Apollo, STC 4033 and the TLM 107s. Wow. Uh, or you can load your own room response to the bus mm -hmm. and that is uh, occupies the user uh, option mm -hmm. um, so in this case you can you can have a the, the bus room be your own room mm -hmm. you could have your own room on every single channel and each mm -hmm. dsr channel having a different room mm -hmm. or you can drive all of them to your own room or one of our rooms uh, very versatile so you can mix everything in one room everything in different rooms some things in different rooms some things in the same room yeah um, which basically means to explore Try things. Yes. Yeah. Is, be, is the, is the be weird and wonderful with this. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, okay. The next really sort of exciting feature about um, Speaker Mix Pro is this thing that you had to explain to me a couple of times, uh, <laughs> but you explain it so elegantly. Um, it's the Z curve, the Z yes. curve feature. Um, and messing around with this again, I totally get it now. And it's, you know, it's, it's a feel thing. It really, really is just its own magic. Um, yep. But this is something that hasn't been done before, if I, if I understand right. Um, it's, it's, it's helping us couple the speaker and the amp that we're using um, to get the ultimate you know, tone or feel, right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, in fact, we may as well go through the, ho the whole of the input channel. So, starting at sure. the top left-hand corner, we have C-curve or if you're from the UK's Ed curve. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bit of both. I go between. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so the, uh, the DSRs themselves are component level models. So mm -hmm. they have their own description of electrical input impedance. Uh, and that's effectively, we have a conductor in a real loudspeaker. We have a, a coil that drives the motor 
mm -hmm. uh, and moves the cone and that mm -hmm. that coil is made of some conductor uh, so it has a resistance and that resistance is very frequency dependent um, mm -hmm. so depending on what combination of coil and and uh, and basically what speaker you have you get a slightly different input impedance uh, and then if you put it in a cabinet you connect maybe multiple speakers together in series or series parallel if you're a 4 by 12 or whatever combination you, you, you prefer, you modify the impedance more, which is all frequency dependent. Uh, and then you have the acoustic loading of the cabinet itself as well, which modifies add resonances, damping in certain places and so on. So the, the system of guitar speaker in guitar cabinet uh, represents a very complicated electrical input impedance. The output of an amplifier has a similar uh, complicated electrical output impedance. In a real system, when we connect the two with a physical cable from the output of the amplifier to the input of the cabinet, they, there is a, a connection. They know about each other. Mm -hmm. And electrically, things are going on back and forward. And it is mm -hmm. it, very important to the tone because the two are coupled together. Mm -hmm. One is responding to the other and vice versa. They are, there's a communication, a sort of synonymous relationship between the two that results in damping at certain frequencies, uh, maybe the low end changes, depending if you're using a very high gain amp or a low gain amp, you can get slight under damping um, and uh, a difference in the, in the high end, difference in the mid band. It's all very frequency dependent. That, that depends on what amplifier you're using, or the output of the amplifier you're using and the output impedance and the input impedance of the cabinet, which is speaker cabinet dependent. So we have the DSRs, which have their own input impedance. Um, and Z curve is effectively the output stage of an amplifier. Now, it's not. It, it's important to state that it's not the a, a model of an amplifier because right. Celestian, we, we we're a speak, loudspeaker manufacturer, and and Speaker Mix Pro is about the about the guitar speakers and the and the cabinets. Mm -hmm. um, the output, the in this case, the output of the amplifier is a, effectively a model of the the transform and the output coupling of the electrical impedance mm -hmm. of the output. So you can put any amp model into the front of this. And it works fine. It mm -hmm. doesn't make a difference to the to the tone of the amp in a kind of distortion context or anything mm -hmm. like that. You can put any amp model into it, uh, but it allows you from the left hand side of the Z curve in off to the maximum on the right hand side, modify the output impedance of the amp model in Speaker Mix Pro to get the correct coupling between the amplifier model you're using mm -hmm. and the loud uh, the guitar speaker and cabinet combination. Mm -hmm. um, so on the left hand side of the dial we have a higher output impedance which is equivalent to a like a lower gain amp and on the mm -hmm. right hand side we're moving into like really high gain amps mm -hmm. where you get a slightly under damped low end so you get a little mm -hmm. bit more chug uh, slight scoop in the mid band and then a little bit more at the top end mm -hmm. um, which is it's kind of moving towards that kind of gent style you know yes. the, the 5150 big loud sounds um, so it's, it's effectively in the digital domain, returning the real electrical connection between two component level models. Uh, and it's, it's worth saying as well, the Z curve is entirely dynamic. Both parts are dynamic. Both parts respond to how hard you play. Wow. Um, so it, it's, the, it's the true connection between the two, um, which is something that is uh, it, with impulse responses where you have an amp model and then an impulse response, they, mm -hmm. they don't know anything about each other. So mm -hmm. this is returning the feel of the connection of the two uh, right. together, which is very, very, very important to the tone. Yeah, it's, uh, the you know the guitar speaker makes a huge difference to the tone. Cab makes a huge difference to the tone. Amp makes a huge difference to the tone. Yeah, they all need to know about each other. Right, and then you have a you know big happy family. And <laughs> you know we were sort of talking before about you know you might have you know if you're going through maybe like a JCM eight hundred sort of thing or, or that kind of vibe you might have it on you know the higher setting of the the Z curve the Z curve. Um, but at the same time you might want to experiment with it you know, on a lower setting and, and see how that sounds to the, there's no yeah. right or wrong, is there? It's just, there's more options, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Since, since we're working in the door with plugins, you could, you could put any amp model into the front of uh, speaker mix pro right. and adjust Z curve or Z curve, wherever you like it. Mm -hmm. um, you, you can match it to the amp model you're using and get a very realistic signal chain from start mm -hmm. to finish mm -hmm. and a very realistic feel of the coupling and the dynamic response. Mm -hmm. Or you can just get really weird and and have like super low gain amps with a super high gain amp coupling. Mm -hmm. uh, so the speaker's being driven by the the electrical impedance and the damping response at the low end, especially of mm -hmm. a really high gain amp. But your mm -hmm. the tone you're driving it with is very low gain. So you can get right. some interesting sounds that uh, are are not really possible in in the real world, which is the the, uh, the benefits of the, of the digital domain. We can do real things very well, and we can also do weird things that mm -hmm. are 
are interesting, which is yeah. new sounds. Yeah, definitely. I love it. Um, um, okay. And then uh, we also have the, the delay button there as well. Yeah. Um, so delay, uh, if we're with a mono input, like a guitar signal, um, and you want to add some width, click the delay, move the millisecond value to wherever, and it effectively duplicates your mono input onto the other channel, like the, the right-hand side, for example. Uh, delays it by a very small amount mm -hmm. to just give you some width, uh, yeah. which is cool, especially for um, rhythm playing yes. uh, or anything, really. It's, it's, uh, it's nice to get a bit of width, uh, and you can choose that. If you click the text underneath the, uh, the, uh, the dial for the, t the, the uh, delay dial, you can change it to two different widening algorithms or right to left. So your wow. delay is on either side, or it's just uh, delaying but adding stereo width by mid-side processing. Uh, a, with two different al algorithms that have a slightly different width perception. It's a very nice quick effect when you're mm. just looking for, you know, like you say, a widening sound. Or I've actually used it on some lead playing as well, where I just quickly cool. throw it on and it, you know, just makes it sound, you know, just gives it a little bit, yeah, width, a big, bit of a bigger sound. So it's yeah, really, really yeah. fun to play with. Um, yeah. Okay, and then let's talk about EQ because um, all the faders, all the, all the channels here all have their own EQ, which is... Um, can I, get, can I stop you there? Because there is something that yes. is uh, subtle to the eye, but quite okay. important with the input channel. Yes, um, please the, do the stop. The blue me. fader on the left-hand side. Yes. Uh, the input fader. Yeah. Um, it is not just driving the input signal as, as a, a, an increase in the gain. Okay. Um, if you have loaded any DSRs onto any of the mixer channels, mm -hmm. the input fader is effectively controlling the driving power of the speaker. Okay. So if you drive, if you increase the input gain, uh, uh, and and uh, activate, for example, the auto gain to monitor the output, so we have a uh, no difference in the net gain. If you increase yeah. the input gain, it's effectively increasing the power, the electrical power that's driving the dynamic model of the the, the dynamic speaker response. Uh, so if you've got a vintage thirty on channel one, for example, and you drive it right to the max, you're driving mm -hmm. that vintage thirty at sixty watts. Wow. If you drop it down to the bottom, you're effectively driving it at like one watt. So you get, you get power related tone. And then also as you play, the, the dynamic response modulates around that as well. So it's, uh, it's the, the effect of cranking into the, into the speaker. Um, and each DSR has its own power rating. So yeah. um, the, uh, the blue 15 watts, the uh, G12M greenback uh, 25, uh, and they all have that. So you can have a number of different speakers on different channels and have the same in input gain. And they're all driving at their relative power stage of that input gain. So if you're right, right. at the max for everything, everything's driving at its max power rating. Uh, so you're not overdriving certain speakers. You're driving it to where it's at its power rating. Um, That's really cool. It just... <laughs> And yet there are more options. There are more things to change yes. your tone, more, more sounds to go and explore. Wow. That is it's, cool. It's a subtlety, but it's, uh, it's, it's novel. It's interesting. And it, yeah. it, makes a, it really makes a difference because it's not just dynamic in the response to your playing. It's mm -hmm. dynamic to the power. Yeah. Um, so if you, if you've got, um, if you like the sound of, of guitar speakers driven hard, mm -hmm. um, then it's, you can get that. You can, you can get towards that sound. For yeah. Sure. You, you, you might get towards that sound more in this plugin than you might in your living room. You know, we'll hear a vintage 30 <laughs> really, really get empowered here, won't we? Yeah. I was, than... Vintage 30 <laughs> running at 60 watts is loud. Yes. Having, having done it, I, I, you know, you don't want to spend too much time uh, being uh, blasted like that, uh, uh, you know, unless you just rock and roll you know, yeah. <laughs> and just go for it. But it's, uh, yeah, that's loud. So that's not, not, it's not a home friendly tone. It's right. stage tone. Yeah. Uh, which is the difference. Some, you know, the really awesome sounds and, and his, historic guitar tones are sometimes really, really loud. Yeah. And to get that, you need to be loud. Yeah. Uh, so. So here we right. are doing With it. Headphones on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very cool. I like it. I like it. Um, and then, yeah, the, the EQ. Yes. Um, so the, every single channel has, uh, and the master and the room, in fact, has its own dedicated parametric EQ. Yeah. Uh, you can open it by clicking on the, the small EQ window. Okay. Um, and, uh, we've got a number of, a number of, uh, uh, normal EQ nodes that you can activate by double clicking right. moving around and you have boost cut and the, uh, the Q, yeah. uh, with the little slider tab. 
Yeah. Um, we then have uh, the 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 three sort of floating parameters, which are a uh, a uh, high pass, low pass, and a tilt in the center. Which, if you activate, you can add a six dB tilt to the HF or the LF oh, in right. whichever direction. Oh, that's cool. Uh, which is quite cool. So if you if you've got a a particularly dark mix that you want a little bit more at the top end, you can tilt it, and the whole spectrum shifts. Yeah. Um, which is a nice little feature. Uh, once you've set your EQ, or even while you're setting EQ, it, the EQ is activated itself onto the channel by clicking the, the little power button in the top right-hand corner of the, yes. of the mini EQ window. And you'll see if you make any major changes that the, uh, the changes um, in the major wow. EQ window when you close it are shown in the mini EQ window. Yeah. Uh, so it's useful for just tracking uh, differences um, yeah. without having to have lots of EQ tabs open and clicking back and forth between them. You can see that this channel has got a little bit less HF or you've got a boost here and so on. Yeah. Um, yeah, and you can do that for the for each channel, room, or master, and the master will process the whole mix as a as a collective. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's versatile. You can, yeah, get interesting with it. Well, look, Joe, thank you so much for uh, for speaking to us about it. Um, it really, really has been great catching up with you. And uh, yeah, let's speak again real soon. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very right. much for having me. See you, man. Right. Mm -hmm.